here is the lineup for Weber as we get ready to start game two. Weber making one substitution. Brandon Hott replaces Cristiano Sergejevas as the second man of the order. Remember, the first team to get to two points takes the match. A game worth a point, and in the event of a tie, each team gets half a point. Senior Cruz Webster leading off for Weber just as he did in the opening game, where he provided two of Weber's five strikes. Seemed like a pretty intelligent move by Del Warren, the Weber coach, to stick with his leadoff man. It's more of the same for Cruz. Now here's the first change made by Gordon Babbitton. This is Kevin Tatro, a senior from Bel Air, Kansas. And he is now the new leadoff bowler. The national champion singles player, Jeffrey Young, has been moved to number two, and Lavoy has been benched. Or Lavoie, pardon me. Right and not getting a break on the 10 pin. Hoping to get a spark out of what a lot of their players list as the emotional leader on the team. Hard to come in in this situation. Tough conversion. Does not get it. So here's the substitution for Weber we talked about. Brandon Hott, who threw a fill ball in the 10th. Sophomore from Seminole, Florida, now steps in for Sergeyevus. Stepped up big a couple of times in match play to get them here. That's one you don't see every day. 6 9 10. No, but the nice part is they're all together. <laughs> Did get to throw the throw ball in the last, in that last game, so he did get one lineup shot in there. Got it. Played it well. well. Chris, take us through the oil pattern for this championship match. Well, it's a 40-foot pattern. Where Weber started at was right in through here. Now they're going to move in, and they're going to play this area right here, with the exception of some of their heavy heavy-handed guys, they'll move in a little bit deeper. So the 10-time champions, Wichita State, in an early but manageable deficit. And here's Jeffrey Young, your singles champion. He wants to go on tour when he's finished with college. And you won't like to see him if he continues to throw like that. <laughs> wow. Well, he had a big strike in the initial game, and this is another big one right here. Well, this is what he did all through the singles on his way to winning that title. Great shot. Trying to get his team back on target. Already down one to zero. Two points wins it, so it's very simple. If Weber International wins this game, they are national champions for the first time for the men's program, a four-year-old program. So here's Jonathan Trzinski. Weber up 11. Buried it. Wow, an explosive strike. And those last two shots are the, what we expected from this match all along. Yeah, nothing wrong with this shot here. Great balance of the foul line. Pure flush. So for the Shockers, here's Marcus Burt. His third year with the team. He is from Sweden. Can't mix him up, and that is a low percentage conversion. 2-8-10. And the man who's been behind the success of Wichita State right there, and he's kind of behind his team, uh, uh, metaphorically and actually, Gordon Vatican, 36 seasons at Wichita State. He was your college coach. Absolutely, and he was a player before that. So. Uh... Uh, he's been a part of the university team for nearly since its inception. So the Swede will try to oh. go for it. <laughs> wow! You think if he's going to get two out of those three, those weren't the two. Well, it's the only way to really to make it. 
get the two over into the 10 and have it deflect back off over into the eight. And that's really close to being perfect. Our first look at Marcelo Swartz, a senior from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and definitely an emotional leader for this Weber team. I think he nearly broke the hand of Gary Faulkner on that high five. <laughs> you could hear those hand slaps over the cheers. And there's a glimpse of the Weber Lady Warriors who won the women's championship last week. Weber trying to become only the third school in history to win men's and women's team titles in the same year. So here's Devin Bidwell, the sophomore. And I kick the trouble away, but the four pin remains. That shot just the tick high? Just a little bit. His first shot on that lane since they practiced over 20 minutes ago. Well, here's a little bit about Wichita State University, established 1895. How about... Uh, Let's see, Parcells, I've heard of him. The X-Man, what a great player. The other guy, uh, <laughs> not up on that one, I'm afraid. I know Josh Blanchard, right? Went to Great Bowler, went to Wichita State. Sean Rash, right? Cliff Levingston. Yeah, Cliff Levingston. Yeah, Antoine Carr. Sean Rash just won the TFC, did he not, recently? Yeah. So, yeah, some, uh, some real bowling talent. <laughs> so Bidwell picks up that four pin, but it is an uphill treadmill right now for the Shockers, and they know it. And what you're hearing is G for Gary Faulkner, the anchor bowler who has been sharp so far. <laughs> Couldn't get that broken up. Just a touch wide. Fortunes though to break down the seven pin and not make it a big split. He's been trying to get it out to about the fifth board, and that gets out to about the third board. And he didn't make it. And now can Wichita State jump on this opening? A surprise mistake there. Not an easy shot, but still, you kind of figured he can handle it. No, and this shot doesn't get that wide, and that's the one thing even though they have great communication with the team, it doesn't help any when you're the only left-hander. Mm. Well, Branson struggled in the first game. And it's still struggling. Well, that's an interesting question because you're a right-hander for anybody who may not know that. Can you relate to a lefty? A little bit. You can watch ball motion, but really there's nobody there. One of the advantages of teams that have great communication is the first player four pins and they tells the rest of the team, hey, you need to move one left. Mm. Left-hander, when you move to the other pair, you have no idea for sure what it is until you throw a shot and get a result. Oh! <laughs> that's, I don't think that's how the little lane draw above the... Lane will tell you how to do it, but it's going to go as a big break for Wichita State. So is this fifth frame a pivotal one? Weber leads it open, and Wichita State gets a kiss. You see Intercollegiate Team Championships is brought to you by North Point Insurance. By the USBC Youth Open Championships. Join us this summer in Indianapolis at our national tournament. And by Bowl.com, your online source for all things bowling. We're halfway through game two here at the USBC Men's Intercollegiate Team Championships. Weber took game one and is currently up by 23 here in game two. This is the sixth frame, so we rotate back to the top of the order with Weber's Cruz Webster. Surprised to see a 10 pin left the way he has rolled the ball. In that number one position, again, in the Baker format, if you roll the first frame, you roll the sixth, the second, the seventh, and so on down. So your anchor bowler is the fifth and tenth frames. Well, I like both Coach Warren and Coach Vatican's strategy of putting the players that are striking at the top 
The team that gets out to an early lead has such an emotional advantage over the other team. And he has been nothing but solid. Three strikes and now a 10 pin. And the spin. So Wichita with just one strike in this match and that came from Jeffrey Young the number two bowler in this game. And here is Kevin Tatro. So when the Shockers beginning to claw back in this match, you see Jeffrey Young right there getting ready. Excellent shot here. Doesn't get nearly as wide, only about the 10th board. Keeps the ball in front of him. What I mean by that, he's not giving the head pin away a lot. Mixes him up, gives him a chance. Basically gives their best bowler this, this whole tournament a chance to throw a double and get him right in this thing. Now we'll take a look at Brandon Hunt. Sideways, and he got a nice kick out on the 10. You saw that one from the minute it left his hand. He's got through a lot of strikes that looked just like that yesterday. It's a part of a lot of doubles. Got a big hand, crosses 17, gets at that same 10. He can make it change directions, though. Opens up a little more hold, slaps that 10 around. That's why you generate all the power to try and get that flat 10 out. And here's the guy you've called the best bowler for Wichita State in this tournament. You see, it's never been done before by a male bowler to win both. Individual and team glory. Oh boy, wrap around on that 10. He can't believe it. Well, that's a huge shot there too. Chance to get down to 13. Got it just a little wide, but he's so well matched up right now. It saw the mid lane, made it back. Great move. No problem. Sends the weak shocker down the lane. Yes. <laughs> also interesting to hear how the supporters of these two teams pick up when they sense an opportunity. And Weber fans getting a little excited. Well, both of the men's and the women's team used to bowling for national championships as well. It's pretty high bowling IQ. The Sharks are smelling blood in the water right now. Chance to go up by 33. Be there. Whoa. Whoa. Randy Stalton, the women's coach, celebrates the Jonathan Trzinski 10 straight back. Rock solid right there. And that is bad news for Wichita State. Double coming down into their best two bowlers. Getting into must strike territory now. Marcus Burnt. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the message. I haven't seen one of those in this match yet. Watch the head pin as it goes to the wall and comes back. Perfect. <laughs> so there you see the situation through eight. Wichita State down 33 pins and Weber working a double. Went through the nose. He'll get a little break, loses that 10 pin. So he's got just the three six. Sets up some interesting scenarios here. Such as? With the spare, Wichita State strikes out for 203. Weber on a 204 pace. We have a developing situation. Got it. No problem at all. And the player coming up now for the Shockers that you have flagged is a very talented prospect. He wants to bowl on tour, Devin Bidwell. Absolute must strike for Wichita State. Had to have it, left the four pin in the fourth frame, made the one board move. The double that was absolutely crucial to extending Wichita State's season. Well, this is what you want. You want it to come down to the anchors. 
Gary Faulkner. Oh, absolute stone cold stunner of an eight pin. This is a terrible break. <laughs> Makes a great adjustment. This ball cuts right through, takes the five right off the eight. Turns the count to even between the two teams. Spare strike will guarantee they can't do any worse than a tie, but a strike there would have put them firmly in the driver's seat, only needing a spare to win. All right, nailed it. So as Chris mentioned, we have the possibility of a tie. You know, the maximum scores here for both teams, 203. Now if that happens, both teams will get half a point, and that would move Weber ever closer to that magic number of two points and the chance. There's your 203, Your Honor. This is a lot to ask, even though he's a senior. He's thrown three shots, none of them have hit the pocket. Now he needs to throw three of his best ones in his career. Got no. one. That's a lot of moxie right there to trust one, get it all the way out to the gutter. When he did it on the left lane, it didn't work. It hung on him. On this lane, it makes it back off the, really the third board there, mixing them back up. Got two more. That's what he has to do just to split the game. Oh, one more to tie. Settle down, collect yourself. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to breathe. Four years of practice in competition. One more shot to extend your season. If he doesn't strike, Weber wins the title. Wichita State stays alive. What a performance. He is an anchorman. Eric O'Branson invented the wheel. And he got a nice message, too.